Welcome to Digital Shop Talk, episode 11. One, one. I'm Alex Porter, 32. I am Josh Allen at the Squash, 7. And uh, we want to start off with some news here in the space. Uh, three pretty sizable updates for you. One, as many of you have already heard, Google is restructuring into a kind of a holding company called Alphabet. Um, and essentially, the kind of the, the quick takeaway from that is that this kind of allows Google to have a lot of its little side projects. And if they fail, it doesn't hurt the kind of the, the Google brand. So if it's, you know, Google Plus, for example, fails, it doesn't hurt Google. So interesting move. Um, we're seeing this. It's kind of the way Alibaba is structured right now. Mm -hmm. um, but we're seeing this more and more in the space. Uh, two other quick things. One, uh, Google Search Console API became available last week. Yes. Very exciting news for everyone involved in SEO. A wealth of data. Um, if you're not accessing that, uh, do it now or give us a call. Absolutely. Um, and the last that I'm most excited about is Google's Eddystone project. Eddystone is basically uh, Google's answer to iBeacon. Um, and it's an open source software that works with a number of different beacon partners. We've talked about Estimote before, mm -hmm. um, and it works with all devices. And it was really kind of opening the door for a broader application of beacon projects in the future. Right. And, you know, beacons are, are becoming really kind of the craze right now in the retail world. Um, probably about six months to a year ago, even Business Insider released some stats that said um, by 2016, roughly 85% of retailers are going to be using beacons in some fashion. So whether that's the iBeacon, Eddystone, or some variation uh, of the technology, they are very much going to be you know, more prevalent in terms of retail shopping. The thing is, is that um, the other piece also, actually by 2018, Business Insider noted that uh, about 4.5 million um, are going to be active in a, in a matter of years. So it's not just kind of getting them installed, um, but activating them. And you know, the biggest thing right now is that you know, while there are roughly 550 to 600 million phones that have the Bluetooth capability to pick up beacon transmissions, a lot of retailers are really um, screwing it up when it comes to uh, the application of the beacons, how to use the technology and how to market to their customers. So whether it's the infrastructure piece of things, they're catching data from, you know, outside their store premises that ends up kind of skewing their, their actual readings on the overall data set, uh, or really just not understanding their data points from their point of sale system, from their you know outside marketing efforts, whether it's online, <clears throat> offline, and how to weave beacon technology and beacon programs into that. So while they're great and while they're really growing, and it's going to be fascinating to see the application of these, um, you know there needs to be really a plan in place if you are a retail store or brand um, to really leverage uh, the power that, that yeah. these are going to provide. So. This is the this is the, the time of the beacon is now. The time of the beacon. One quick question on Alphabet though. Do you think they got their inspiration from Hooli? There's a lot of buzz about it, and they even dropped a little Easter egg in the code in the original announcement. Right. They linked to they linked to Hooli. Linked or to Hooli.com, Hooli right. XYZ. So um, probably the best show on TV in Silicon Valley. Um, I like Top Chef. Top Chef. <laughs> we'll be back. All right, in this week's toolkit, toolbox, we change it every week, but uh, um, one of the big things that's really kind of growing, we get a lot of buzzwords in digital, and it seems right now when it comes to paid search specifically, the term alpha beta uh, is, is becoming more and more popular. It was actually coined by a gentleman from 3Q Digital in terms of how to structure your paid search campaigns, um, but something that I think we've been doing for quite some time, and you probably should be doing anyway. Yeah, and basically the premise is um, you need to have broad... And you need to have exact phrase. We can separate that out for right now. But broad, as you know, captures everything. Um, exact is very specific. When you look at your exact traffic, you get better click-through rates, better conversion rates, those sorts of things. So this this concept of kind of having your net out there um, for broad match and catch all the fish, sure. figure out which one you want, and then go get the right bait for the right fish and bring them in through exact match is uh, that's best practices in paid mm -hmm. search. So it's good to see that people are moving this way. Um, it'll make search marketing that much more efficient, um, but it's definitely something that, that we've developed our own uh, tool set uh, that we dub Pro Semantic. We really base it off the semantics of the search mm -hmm. and we see you know incredible efficiencies gained. So if you're not looking at your keywords from a match type perspective and moving good performers from broad to exact, um, you're leaving a lot on the table. A lot on the table, um, probably wasting a lot of money in the process. Both, yeah. yes, absolutely. Time for the upvote. Upvote. So <laughs> beacons, as we talked about, are are big right now. And it makes a lot of sense, right? You take mm -hmm. this little Estimo beacon and you stick it on your wall. 
And then you can do whatever you want with it. I think that's where a lot of the problem comes in is mm-hmm. what do you do with it? Sure. Who's running the campaign? What are you trying to do with it? Um, what does the data and the, mean? And those are all big questions that, that we need to tackle as this becomes a new opportunity for all of us marketing. But do you like sausage? Um, breakfast sausage? <laughs> I like bratwurst. Okay. <laughs> breakfast sausage. Are you more of a bacon man? Uh, sure. Some Jimmy Deans once in a while, you know. Okay. Well, so Hillshire Farms actually had a pretty cool case study. This is about six or seven months ago. But mm-hmm. what they did is they basically have access to a whole bunch of yeah, apps they partnered with some publishers that had Epicurious and mm-hmm. some apps for like list taking and stuff like that. So if you went into a grocery store and were using one of those apps, you got a message that said 20% off Hillshire Farms breakfast sausage. <laughs> now, if you got that ad, would you go buy Hillshire Farms? I mean, I would consider it. Yeah. Especially because that, you know, especially if that's already in a, in a brand of sausages list. that you're going to buy sausages. Sure. Well, and I think the interesting thing about that is one thing we're seeing with vegans that we talked a little bit about before is a lot of these companies are relying specifically on their own apps. So right. props to Hillshire for kind of integrating across apps right. um, to really reach more users. Because that's customers. the big conundrum, right? Yeah. It's like, okay, you, you, you're you potentially you're measuring that people are coming in or out of store. How do you actually engage with them? I think that's a little bit of the missing link right now. And there's mm-hmm. some companies out there that... You know, we've got basically a, a whole cottage industry coming up around this, whether it's a display network, it's the t- technology, it's the platform. You've got Google and Apple in the space. You've got everyone trying to figure out how to do it. You know, if I'm a, if I'm a big consumer products group, good, and I, I'd partner with, look, hopefully like a Target, mm-hmm. say Target, I'd like to show an ad when you know someone's in the store. Sure. If they fit these demographics. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's where we're then... We're kind of removing the geo-targeting piece out of it. So mobile display, you can obviously do that. And you mm-hmm. could say, let me target all targets, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, which is which is effective. Um, and this is another way to go about it. So I'm very curious about beacons. As we've mentioned before, we have our own beacons. We're trying we're trying to figure out how to use them for us. Yeah. We're trying to say like, donuts are in the break room and see if we can get engagement People here at location three. So yeah. maybe next time we'll, we'll run a live beacon test and we'll see if, you know what we should do? We should put set it up and so be like, everyone come to this room right now and we'll see if anybody comes Anyone up. actually shows up. I right. Mean, well, like any Just brand. Like if anybody you, tweets us. Yeah, but you have to right. you can incentivize them, right? So I think donuts well, we are on the right track. Tweet, do, Okay. First 10 people get $10. All like, right. Call, show them to the office. All right. We'll so, get some Dunkin' Donuts. We'll test some beacons. beacons we'll see what the are, user experience is with our own employees and right. colleagues. And uh, who knows? We'll see where it goes from there. But exciting stuff. Thanks for tuning in this week. A lot to talk about. Tweet at us using the, the hashtag digital shop talk at location three. Porter 32, enjoy the rest of your summer vacation. We'll see you next time.